everyone knows that Carson Beck is playing really bad football right now. Thankfully, if you're a Georgia fan, there's a lot of Georgia players that are playing really good football right now. And that's what this video is about. I know everyone wants to talk about Carson Beck. The dogs can't win at all with Carson Beck. He stinks. Bench him. Gotta get rid of him. All that, right? I, I get it. He's been a turnover machine. But I do want to talk about the players that are playing really well right now because there's a lot of them. And at the end of the day, Georgia's ranked number two in the country. They can still win a national championship. They can still beat Ole Miss. They can still beat Tennessee. They can still win an SEC title. And it's because they've got really, really good players. And I think a lot of them deserve recognition. Um, yes, the quarterback's the most important position on the football team. And he's playing poorly. And he's holding them back. But they're winning these games while he's throwing three interceptions because a lot of guys are playing really well. I don't want to start defensively because there were times when I thought I had the numbers pulled up in front of me. Uh, there were a lot of times where I saw some Big time Chaz Chambliss. Hey, that's what I'm trying to get out of my mouth and, and get this going. Chaz Chambliss had two sacks against the Gators. He's playing really well right now. He doesn't look like Leonard Floyd. He doesn't uh, get after the quarterback like Jarvis Jones, right? He's not the biggest, the fastest, the longest, the most athletic. He is one of the hardest working players on the team, though, and he does get after it. And he plays tough, gritty, physical football. And for a guy that a lot of Georgia fans just wanted to see kind of benched and go away this offseason, he's having a really nice season. I thought he played really well against the Gators, not only with those two sacks, uh, but he was active in other ways too. Uh, C.J. Allen at linebacker, that was one of the more impressive interceptions towards the end of that game that sealed Georgia's victory that I've ever seen. That guy uh, went up and got it. He is turning into one of the best linebackers um, in the SEC, he had eight tackles, two quarterback hits, and that interception. And listen, this is a collective effort. There's a lot of guys making a lot of plays. That's what we talked about this defense. One week, it's Jalen Walker looking like a top 10 pick. And he played well, too, but he didn't flash and make the, the crazy game-changing plays like he did against Texas, right? But he could do that against Ole Miss. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Jalen Walker came out and just crushed them for two or three sacks, right? Um, uh, Ty Ingram Dawkins has the ability to have a game or a drive killing, drive stopping play on any particular play against the run or the pass. Um, but Dalen Everett is another guy who I think is getting better. He had a really nice game, obviously, against Texas. Thought he played well against the Gators. Uh, he was active. I thought he was pretty solid in coverage. I'm watching it from uh, the press box. And sometimes there were some Gators open here or there, but from what I saw, I still need to go back and dig deeper, but I did not see Dalen Everett give up some of the the passes down the field that he has given up in the past. I think he's a guy that is playing a little bit better and better, and they need him to. Uh, Janelle Aguero uh, flashed. He only had one tackle. Felt like he had more of an impact there, but you know what? Arian Smith has come a long way too. The guy does drop passes. He's not perfect, but his route running has got better. Uh, he is getting open down the field. There was uh, a key throw to him uh, late in the ball game where he got open like on his own. He was kind of schemed open in a way, but at the top of his route, he put his foot in the ground and turned and left that safety in the dust. And Carson Beck hit him. And I think that was, as I'm sliding all over the place in my chair, I think that was the first or second big play on that touchdown drive uh, where they went up 27 to nothing. But, you know, say what you want. Aaron Smith does deserve criticism for the drops. He's had some untimely drops, some really bad drops. But there are times when he comes up big. And I think he's the team's leading receiver. I don't have those numbers in front of me. I probably should have had him pulled up. Uh, it's been a crazy morning. But it's either him or Dom Lovett. Uh, I don't know who leads in receptions or yards now. It might be him in both categories. But he is getting better, or he's playing better. He can still play. He can still, there's a lot of room for improvement still, mainly just being on the same page with Carson. Um, but he, his ability to get open has gotten better. Uh, and th I think they're going to need him in a big way against Ole Miss as well. I think um, most of the guys on the team are playing better. And I'll talk about some guys on offense real quick. And the two that stand out to me, especially last weekend, we're the running backs, Cass Jones, walk on, Nate Frazier, true freshman. 
when everyone else was banged up and couldn't go, those two rose to the occasion against their biggest rival when the game was in the balance. Florida ties the game at 20. Uh, they were winning at the half, right? And they, you know, Trevor Etienne goes down. They said, okay, Nate Frazier, true freshman from California, welcome to the rivalry. We need you to make some plays. Hey, Cash Jones. Hey, Cash Money Jones, we need you to truck a couple Gators at the goal line and get us a big touchdown. Dude says, that's fine. Do you need me to catch the ball out of the backfield to do it? Or you, you just want to hand it to me? Oh, you want me to catch it? Okay. And then break away from a guy, then lower my shoulder and just send two Gators into oblivion over the goal line. Sign me up. I can do that. Um, those guys deserve a lot of recognition. And I get Georgia fans want the five stars to play like five stars. But uh, when you see walk-ons like Dan Jackson and uh, Cass Jones out there making plays, uh, it, it it is fun to see, and that's what makes college football so special. Uh, those those tough, gritty guys that earn their way on the team, that earn their way on the field, then start making plays on the field, and then doing it against the biggest rival with millions of people watching. Uh, there's a lot to still be excited about on this team. They just have quarterback that's not playing well at all. Everyone else is. Dylan Bell could play a little better, I, I guess. And, and Dom Levin could play a little better, I guess. Ernest Green could play better. The offensive line is a group that collectively could play better. But, man, it, it's I still think that's tough to do when guys are banged up. You're moving guys around left and right. Monroe Freeling's playing right tackle than left tackle. Uh, Xavier Truss, who I still think is probably a better guard than tackle, uh, it, it is in and out. Is Tate Radlich healthy or not? Sometimes he was out in there. You had some, uh, you know, Jared Wilson go down for a little bit and had Drew Bobo come in. Micah Morris, Dylan Fairchild, left guard, right guard. They're going all over the place. So it, it's tough to build a lot of chemistry when you're mixing and matching, you know, not on purpose. It's just because you need to on that offensive line. So, um, it, it doesn't feel like Carson really trusts his receivers in the offensive line the way he trusts Ladd McConkey and Brock Bowers, and I get it, but elite quarterbacks don't need elite players around him. And it looks like Carson Beck really needs an elite go-to receiver. I mean, every quarterback would love one and, and, and want one, right? But Carson, I, him not being on the same page with guys at this point is – really troubling um and and maybe that's something they can still work on but by now they should be on the same page uh left and right with those receivers this is not the first year he's been throwing the ball to Don Lovett and Dylan Bell and Arian Smith right so you would like to see a little bit more chemistry in the passing attack but Carson is also just forcing the ball into double coverage and not seeing defenders and hitting them right in the chest and throwing balls up in the air when he can take a sack, right? So there's a lot more to him just not being on the same page with his receivers that he's been playing with for years now. It's, uh, I don't, it might be a mental thing. It probably is to a certain extent. I know he's cool, calm, and collective, you know, when things are kind of ugly and he doesn't let, you know, his emotions get to him. But when you, when you've got two weeks like that, and I know he stepped up occasionally in the game and, and he, he did lead them. Two victory with four touchdowns, you know, in the second half, but he's obviously got to play better. But Damon Wilson is a guy who's starting to play better as well. Daniel Harris had a big hit. Chris Cole is a freshman linebacker seeing more time. So, uh, I do think there are, I mean, Oscar's playing well. Ben Urasic, uh, I is blocking better. I thought I was going to mention him earlier in this video, but I forgot. I think he deserves a lot of credit, especially. Because he looked bad at the start of the year. Bad. The transfer from tight end, 84. Missing blocks. I think he had a couple drops earlier this year. But it was mainly him missing blocking assignments. Well, he, he's gotten a lot better. And he is probably one of the more improved players on the team over the, from week one and two till now. So he's making plays in the passing game now. But his blocking has gotten a lot better. I thought Oscar had a really nice game against the Gators. Uh, Lawson Lucky is still a weapon. Uh, we might be seeing more of him against Ole Miss, but you know, it's important to get Trevor Etienne back, but I think Nate Frazier deserves a lot of credit for, you know, stepping up when he's needed to. Cash Jones as well. And then a lot of players on the defense are really playing at a high level right now. I think they have the ability to stop 
you know, that, that Ole Miss attack that is just inconsistent right now. They're, they're not crushing it every week. I think Georgia is more than capable of, uh, slowing down that Ole Miss offense. We'll dig into the more of that this week. Thanks for watching. It's not all about the quarterback. Quarterback's playing bad, but there aren't many other players on this team that are playing bad football. That's why they still have a chance to win the national championship. Carson's got to improve. If he does, they can absolutely win it all because there's a lot of players that are playing at a high level. They deserve recognition. Um, so that's what I got for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. I'll see you over on the website.